Hello everyone, this is Natalie from NellyDesign.com. Today I will show you how to engrave on metal and especially how to enhance the engraving to get a better result. In the first part of this video I will show you the engraving tests I did and then I will test with you two products to make the engraving stand out more. In the second part I'll apply what we've learned previously on a real engraving project by showing you how to use the free SVG hash files that I've made just for you. Okay, so first I will show you what I tried to do. These are tests that start with lines that are very close together to less and less close. It's a bit difficult to see on camera. These are X hatching, so that way and that way, and again, very close together to less and less close. Now, what I want to test is what will work best. I have this China ink, it's actually called India ink, and of course this one stains a lot. So I will make a test to see if I can make it stand out a bit, and I will also be making a test with acrylic paint. I will be testing the ink at the top of these letters and also at the bottom of these ones. And now I'm going to use rubbing alcohol to wipe the excess. Even if you rub over it, it's okay and uh, the ink will stay there anyway. So I'm trying not to rub too hard, but it's not easy. Uh, it would be ideal to have a rag instead of a scott towel. It will help to have fewer residues like this that are coming off the Scott towel. So this gives us a good idea of what it can look like. It's, it's very interesting. And now a simpler solution that won't stain. I want to try this very simple acrylic paint. I've got water beside me and I'm taking a paintbrush to apply it to the metal engraving. Since it's acrylic paint, we'll be able to simply wash this with water. Now you understand why I started by the India ink. If not, I would have removed all the acrylic paint with the alcohol. <laughs> Okay, so when the spacing is larger, we can already see that the paint doesn't really stay there. As you can see, I abandoned my Scott towel for this little rag and it's already going way better. We can see that China ink gave a darker result compared to the acrylic paint. I could also try to give another coat of acrylic paint to see what it does. I'm still not sure which one I like best. If we want something very dark, these ones could do the trick, but they are very long to engrave. The more we go toward these ones, the faster it will engrave. I then tried the second coat with the acrylic paint and let it sit for about 15 minutes. The result? Well, that was not a very good idea. <laughs> there are bits of paint that have dried in the hatching and it doesn't look very nice. 
So that's why I finally opted for India Ink. Also, by analyzing the results, I decided to go with the edge spacing of 0 0.02 inches at 60 and 120 degrees, making an X etching pattern. I think it's a good compromise between the results and the time it will take the Cricut to engrave. So here we are, this is the SVG file that I want to engrave. I bought it on a design bundle and I'll link to it in the description of this video and also on my blog. Uh, you'll find out that it's not exactly the same as uh, the original file and it's because I kind of merged two files because my aluminum sheet is 9x9 nine nine, and so that is the square and this was kind of a rectangle shape and I thought it was missing something so I uploaded uh, this one too and kind of used the bottom of it to put it on there so <laughs> I thought it was more beautiful that way so the first thing we're going to do, because you see we have all of these layers right here, is we're going to uh, weld them together because it's going to get very complex if we leave it like that. So let's select them all and click on weld. Now we need to wait. <laughs> so here we are. The color is not really important because what we're going to do right away is select this shape and put it to engrave so that we don't forget. And now you see it, it's 10 inch wide and my aluminum sheet is 9 inch by 9 inch. So I'm going to draw a rectangle, well a square, <laughs> right now to, and put it 9 inch by 9 inch to kind of make a template for me. So I'm going to put it white and I'm going to send it to back using the right button of my mouse. So send to back. So we can already see that it's too big, so we're going to be able to scale it to the size that we want. I think that looks good. And right away I'm going to duplicate it twice. And now I'm going to explain why. It's because I made for you two SVG files. They are etch files. One of the etches are at 60 degrees and the other one are at 120 degrees. And the third one, well, we need the third one to keep it as is to make sure that the engraving tool makes all of the outline of the shape. What we want to do now is import these edges. So I'm going to upload and I'm going to upload images and we're going to go where you download them from Nelly Design Library. So for myself, it's right here and I named them 0.020 dash 60 and dash 120 so it's 60 degrees or 120 and it's a spacing of 0 0.02 inches so let's select this one open you're going to see a big square like this one i'm going to select the other one and i'm going to insert both of them okay so right away, while they are selected, I'm going to make sure to put them to engrave also, so I don't forget. And once that is done, let's select everything. So to make sure that when I slice, everything is covered, because you see the etching is not touching the design right here, I'm going to align everything and center. So now I'm sure the etching are all on top of each other, and you can always also see the design hand roll candy that are the three of them are on top of each other. Now what happens is that Cricut Design Space is not very good in slicing at that size with small hatches like this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna scale it by 10, multiplying it by 10. So instead of 9.0, I'm gonna move the dot to 90.18. So make sure your lock is lock and then you can press enter. Now you're going to see everything is very big. Actually, you don't really need to come here and check out the design, but I can show you. You see it's right here. They're all on top of each other. And you have this, these warning signs. Don't bother with them because now it's very, very big and Cricut is saying that it's too big for the mat. What I want you to concentrate is on the layer panel right here. So you're going to select the first engrave and the first weld result holding the shift key and then you're going to slice 
and each time you slice, all the layers go on top. So you're going to end up, when Cricut finished thinking and working, you're going to end up with four slice result, just like this one. So you see, one, two, three, four. Now, we don't want the full one. So this is for sure, that's not the one we want. So I'm going to delete it. And then you can choose to keep one of them. It really doesn't really matter which one you keep. So I'm going to delete this one and delete the second one and just keep this slice result. So keep that in mind. Then we're going to do the same thing with the next one. So the 0 0.0260 degrees with another weld result holding the shift key. And we're going to slice. So as I said, you don't really need to, to figure out what's going on right here. You just need to wait and see the new four slice result that we have. Now you're going to see five because that's the one, the last one is the one that we had before. So don't mix it. But we're going to keep only one. This one is a full one. Like I said, I don't want this one. You see it by the little design right here. And I'm going to take delete two of them also the two first one on top so i'm sure I'm, I'm keeping this one and this one so you can really see it clearly now that you have a line that side and a line that side inside of the design and you also have an outline so that's exactly what we want so now we're ready to select it all and go back to the size that we had before so we're going to divide it by 10 and now we're at 99.999 so <laughs> we're going to go to eight 0.999 so let me remove the dot right here and press enter and of course the design is at the top on the left right here and if i move closely just closer you're gonna see it um you see the nice design that it makes so if i just close these eyes you're gonna see that's the outline if i open one you have the 120 degrees i think and this one is the 100 and 60 degrees so if i have all of them open that is what cricut design space is going to make let me zoom out so now i'm going to give you a little trick to position everything on your mat it's a very simple trick but i i really like this trick because i hate doing things with only my eye so i like that everything is precise so i'm going to select all and what I'm going to do is this template that is my metal sheet, I'm going to put it at two by two. Enter. So what it does, it puts this rectangle, it puts my sheet, metal sheet at two and two. So I'm going to do the same thing on my mat. This is where I'm going to place my metal sheet at two. But to make sure I don't have to move it on the mat when I hit make it, what I'm going to do is draw a circle. And I'm going to make it very, very tiny. So let's say 0.1, very small. I'm going to also put it to engrave to make sure Cricut doesn't ask me to change uh, my material. And I'm going to put it to 0.25. Now, 0.25 is the margin that Cricut does, never goes. So it will never engrave in that section. So by doing this, what happens is that I'm going to Close the eye of the square because I don't need it. I'm going to select all and I'm going to attach. So that when I hit make it, this is just perfectly placed exactly where I need it to be because my metal sheet will be placed at two right here. Because at this little circle, it's going right at the corner of those red lines. So my design right here will be placed at the precise spot that I want it to be placed. I don't need to move it around. So I found these metal sheets at Michael's in the clearance section. They were around $11 for six, so not too expensive. They have a little jute twine that I will remove so it can easily fit in the Cricut. As I said, you take the purple mat and find where to put the corner. That's at two and two, right here. This is where the corner of the metal sheet needs to be. So I align like this and press hard and everything should fit perfectly. Now we just need to add some masking tape.
If you want to protect your mat from the little engraving circle the Cricut is going to make right here in the corner, you can add a couple of layers of masking tape. But honestly, it's totally optional. So next step, we hit continue. It's pretty easy because when we browse all material, you're going to get anodized aluminum right here. So this is the one we select. We put the engraving tool in the maker and we're ready to engrave. All right. It's not easy to see on camera, but the engraving is finished. Mm, like this, you're going to see it better. So we're going to darken it, and I've decided to use China ink anyway because it gives a much nicer result. I will also use a smarter method than the test we did previously, meaning that instead of dropping China ink everywhere, I will add just a bit and we'll be using a paintbrush to spread the ink. So there it is, we have ink everywhere, so what I'll do, I will remove the excess with a scut towel. And now instead of using this, I'll rub with this rag. So what I've found is what works even better than rubbing alcohol is nail polish remover, even acetone free. I had left the ink on a bit too long and you can see what it did here, but with the remover it just cleans perfectly. But you can see that it still scratches my rag. <laughs> So I think I'm going to try using this one instead. I might even get better results. Oh yeah, much better with this rag. That won't disintegrate into thousands of little pieces. <laughs> so I'm amazed how much easier it is with the nail polish remover and how nice it looks. I sometimes need to change the side of my rag because I'm starting to spread the black all over. <laughs> I don't know if you see it very well, but the result is amazing. This is another metal sheet I engraved, written hot chocolate, <laughs> so I'm going to do the same thing. Now, just to show you both of the metal sheets we made and compare them, this one in design space with a line spacing of 0 0.02 and the lines in both directions, this one are mostly lines in this direction, but with a spacing very close together here, a bit less and a bit less, and some stylized lines made with Silhouette Studio Business Edition. So I like both. I think they are very different. This one I had to rub a lot because of the line spacing. So this one was way easier to make, but honestly, they are both different styles and they look really nice. 
I'm going to take a picture so you see them better because it's very difficult to light the metal sheets. To finish, something to keep in mind. First, protect your mat so you don't stain it. Use nail polish remover and gloves to remove the china ink and if possible, a sturdy rag that will resist the metal engraving. I hope all of this made you want to try metal engraving and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next tutorial.